G'day everyone, my name is Matt Newman, I'm from the ISW team that's behind the Wildfire plugin for Lotus Notes. Today I'm going to show you how to install, configure and use the plugin. To begin with, you need to make sure that you can actually install plugins into your Lotus Notes client. The easiest way to do that is if we go to the File menu, come down to the Application option and then see whether or not the Install feature is available. Now if the install option isn't available, it means either your administrator hasn't allowed you to install plugins into Lotus Notes, or alternatively, you haven't got your Eclipse preferences set that would allow you to install the plugins. So to manually change that Eclipse setting, if you browse through my computer and go through to your Lotus Notes install directory, so for me it's in the default path, if I go and have a look at my C drive, program files, IBM, Lotus, notes, this is where all of my notes programs and executables are. I'm looking for the framework folder and then RCP. In here I'll find a file called plugin underscore customization dot INI. And if I go and open up this file, I need to make sure that there's a line in here called com.ibm.notes.branding forward slash enable.update.ue equals true. If that line's in my plugin customization any file, that will enable the file application install menu inside Lotus Notes. Remember again, if your administrator has disabled this feature using a desktop policy, you will not be able to install plugins in Lotus Notes. So I know I can install this, so I don't need to do anything to my plugin customization INI file. So I can browse straight off to the website, which would allow me to download the Wildfire plugin. The easiest way to get that, of course, is to go to Wildfire openntf.org. When we go to the wildfire.openntf.org website, you'll see it on the left hand side of the screen there's an option here called releases and as of today we've posted a brand new release of wildfire which is wildfire 143. So if we just go ahead and click on the 143 number, that's going to give us the download options for wildfire there are two files here. The Wildfire 1.4.3 zip file includes the installation and the source code. If all you want to do is install the Wildfire plugin, just download the Wildfire 1.4.3 install.zip. So if we go ahead and click on that, it's going to ask us to save it in a location on our computer. I've actually already done that and I've saved it to my Windows desktop. So I'm just going to extract out that install file, here we go, a couple of clicks, and once that file is extracted, you'll see that inside the extracted folder is another folder called org.openntf.wildfire.update.site. That's the folder that we want to point Lotus Notes to during our install. So here we go, back over into Lotus Notes. I can close out of the OpenNTF site now and go back to File, Application, Install. Now when the Eclipse Installer starts, it's going to ask me to search for New Features Install or Select Updates. I'm going to search for New Features. From this list I need to choose where the new feature is going to be installed from, so I'm going to add a folder location. Now remember I extracted this folder to my desktop, so there it is, Wildfire 143 install. And remember I mentioned earlier that we need to highlight the update site folder. That's it, everything's included right there. Choose OK. I'm going to give this a little bit of a friendly name, so we'll just call it Wildfire. And that's now included in my Eclipse installation list. Choose Finish. That's going to ask me to confirm which features I want to install. So yes, I'd like to install Wildfire. Let's go next. 
Here's the license agreement, which is standard for all plugins that are available on the OpenNTF website. I'm going to accept the terms of the license agreement. Go next. There's my confirmation of the features that I'm going to install. Choose Finish, choose Install the plugin, and hit OK. Now, that's going to run through, install the plugin into Lotus Notes, and then once that installation has completed, you're going to see a prompt appearing inside your Lotus Notes client asking you to restart Lotus Notes. So that's what we're looking for down here. Hasn't come up yet, but let's go ahead and get out of there. Remember, folks, that unless the file application install option is available, you won't be able to install plugins into Lotus Notes. Here we go. So there's my restart option. Let's restart now. Remember also, if your administrator has disabled the installation of plugins, you won't be able to install plugins like Wildfire. Alternatively, inside your Eclipse settings, if you go to the plugin customization.ini file, and remember to include that option. So here we go, good old Lotus Notes login screen, so I'm looking for my silver ball, there it is, log in, and that's going to start Lotus Notes. This is going to take a moment or two longer on my machine because it's going through the initialization of the wildfire plugin. So remember again that plugin customization any file that we were mentioning a moment ago is located back in your Lotus Notes path, which is underneath program files. IBM, Lotus, Notes, Data, whoops, not Data, Framework, RCP. And then we're looking for the plugin customization any file. And remember the special line is com.ibm.notes.branding forward slash enable update UE equals true. Alright, so let's jump out of there. So the installation will now complete. It'll go and provision Wildfire into my Lotus Notes client. One of the things that you'll see once the provisioning has finished is from the file menu, when I go and choose Preferences, I'm now going to see a brand new Wildfire option in my list. Now, what this Wildfire option will allow me to do is to include some accounts into Wildfire. Now, I'm going to start off with something really simple. I'd like Wildfire to update my same time status for me. So I'm going to create a new account. I'm going to choose same time as the account type and I'm going to give it a name of same time ISW. So here we go. Getting a same time account is pretty easy. We just choose get same time community. That's going to give me a pop-up and ask me which community I'd like to install. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the ISW community. Then the next thing I'm going to do inside Wildfire is go down here and choose a group to add this account to. Groups are fairly important because they allow you to identify where you're posting your Wildfire updates to. So let's go and create a new group called ISW. So I apply all of those settings, hit OK. Uh, Wildfire hasn't appeared in my sidebar, so maybe if I go View, Right Sidebar Panels, and I'll be able to turn Wildfire on in my Right Sidebar Panel. There's my new icon for Wildfire. If we go and click on that, you see that Wildfire opens up. Running across the top of the screen, these are all of your groups that you've actually created. Now, because I've previously had Wildfire installed, there are a few groups that are here that don't actually mean anything. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of these groups that I've had in here before. Personal, same time, and Twitter. And OK. You'll see now that the group icons at the top of the Wildfire plugin now only show me that account that I was creating earlier. There's my ISW same time account. So here we go. Let's go over to same time. And I'm going to log in. Now this will automatically log in, log me into my Office Same Time account. When I come down here and have a look at my status, you can see that it's pretty boring at the moment. It just says I am available. So what I'm going to do is change my Same Time status by using Wildfire. Here we go. 
working on a video. And first button underneath the status window is the post button. So if I go on ahead and hit that, you'll see that it's pretty quick to go through and post my update. I've only got one account in here at the moment, so that's going to post it to my ISW same time account. If I go back over to same time contacts, point to myself again, and you can see that my status now has updated. I'm working on a video. So let's go and include another account. So I've got another same time account in here for Bleed Yellow. So I'm going to log into my Bleed Yellow account as available as well. So here we go, there's the Yellow Bleeders group and that's all loading and showing me a few people that are currently logged in. Let's go and expand that, come down and find Matt Newman again, and again my status currently on Bleed Yellow says I am available. So a same time account, remember, settings, new account, account type, this one again will be same time. Under the account name, I'm going to call it bleed yellow same time. Get my same time community, okay, there we go, im.bleedyellow. Create a group for bleed yellow choose OK and apply that account type. When I hit OK now you're going to see that I've got two group icons at the top of the screen. One is for the bleed yellow account and the other one is for the ISW account. So I only want to choose bleed yellow at the moment. I just disable ISW working on wildfire movie and post that to my bleed yellow status and again, when I come back down here into same time contacts, what you're going to see is Matt Newman's status has now been updated, working on a wildfire movie. So that's great. There are more accounts, of course, that we can add besides just same time. So I'm going to now go and add another new account, and this time I'm going to choose a Lotus Connections account. Here we go. Let's call this Bleed Yellow Connections. This time I'm going to make sure post is enabled. Uh, I need to put in my bleed yellow username. So there it is. I need to put in my bleed yellow password. And the most important thing about connections is making sure that you get the connection server right. For bleed yellow it's pretty easy. It's just bleedyellow.com. This time you can see that there's a new feature available in Wildfire which will allow me to get feeds from Bleed Yellow. Feeds will not only allow me to post statuses to my Bleed Yellow connections, it'll also retrieve statuses from my Bleed Yellow connections as well. Now I'm not going to create a new group this time, I'm just going to add it to the current Bleed Yellow account. Apply those settings, choose OK, and you'll notice now that the Bleed Yellow account is no longer a same time icon, that's because this group contains two different account types. And if I come back down here to the wildfire buttons, you'll see that one of the buttons here will show me the groups that I've got configured. So we can see here that now underneath the Bleed Yellow group, I've got both a connections account and a same time account. So because it's mixed, it only gives me that group icon rather than an application icon under the ISW group for same time. So here we go, um, middle of the demo and post that. And You'll see that because I'm over here on the group page, um, that's also showing me where that status update is currently being posted to. So it's being posted to both Bleed Yellow Connections and bleed yellow same time. So both of those statuses have been updated. If I go down here to same time contacts, point to my bleed yellow name, you'll see here we go, we're now in the middle of the demo. If I go back over to wildfire and have a look at my status buttons down here, you'll see that I've got a feeds icon. And if I go ahead and click on that, you'll see here in the feeds panel when wildfire goes and retrieves status updates, your status updates will begin appearing in, in your timeline in the feeds panel at the bottom of the screen. So I've just added in a connections account, I've added in a same, couple of same time accounts. How about 